Hello. I still haven't come up with a good idea for an intro yet, so I'm just going to go straight into it. Uh, this guy is a salamander conversion I've just finished recently. Uh, this was done as a, as a commission gift for a childbirth gift. It's a really cool project to be involved with. Uh, and Tom, who's it for, if you're watching this, uh, I'm really happy and glad to have been able to make a model for you. And I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. I hope you are as well. So I'll go through just to start off with the parts that I used for the uh, conversion to make him. So uh, the head is from, I think it's from the new uh, Assault. Primaris kit, one of those, somewhere like that. Uh, I used a lot of parts from Adrax Agatone, the salamander, so we've got his cloak, uh, the base piece that comes with him, uh, his hammer makes up the, the head part of the spear, the shaft of the handle is from a Grey Knight Terminator um, hammer, I believe or it could be a staff, one of the two. Um, the power fist is, I'm not 100% sure, it's a, it's a power fist from something. Uh, I've used the melter and bolter combo from uh, Alexis Pollock's The Forge World model. The spear shaft is a sword blade that I've added onto the, the top of the hammer. Where the hammer used to be, I cut off the sides and put the salamander symbols there using a uh, brass edge uh, and then I use the, uh, the salamander uh, badge from Adrax Agatone and his right arm is from the Blood Angels uh, Lieutenant. The cloak is Adrax Agatone as well however I there's that bit where it curves around the the hammer, usually while it's head while it's held down to his side. Uh, I, I cut that out and then re-sculpted in a bit up there. Uh, you could probably see just a little bit difference in the uh, the smoothness quality of the un of the plastic underneath because it's screen stuff. I didn't take any photos of that, unfortunately. I've got to get better at thinking about those sort of photos. So we'll get into the painting and the techniques used. I'm trying to hold it up steady. I've still got to figure out a way to uh, get something to hold it and then I can turn it. But I mean, as I touch it, it's always going to end up moving around. So I'm not sure what the best solution for that is. Uh, I, when I was painting this guy, I was thinking about his eyes and I ended up going with the glowing red eyes. I mean, it's a salamander. How else can you do it? Uh, I, I was thinking about doing like white sclera, I think the sclera is the word, um, and then just red pupils, but uh, the, the, the eyes on this guy aren't huge and so it, it doesn't really work in the glowing sense of the way to, to do it that way, so I ended up deciding not to. Uh, I've tried to get a... Um, a green that's not too bright but colorful enough to be like the salamander's green that I that I like. Uh, I think it's pretty close to what I wanted. There maybe is a little bit too much yellow in it in this view especially but in the hand I think it's not as it's not as visible as that uh, and I, I, I've, I've once again used the, the saturation difference uh, with the focal points up here and then going down his leg like even this out part of the leg here is is not anywhere near as bright as as up in his chest and then down here there's any barely any green uh, above a very low value down there uh, and actually the, the shadows have a fair amount of purple in them 
because I was trying to tie it all together in with the lava base, which you can see down there. So this was a, a lot more challenging than I expected uh, when I first painted it. Usually I find Space Marines more of a... Um, not not as challenging these days anymore because I've painted so many. I know the volumes, I know what I'm going to do, but because of this guy, he's one of the first running Primaris that I've painted and also I wanted to have this glow coming from below, but also in normal light so it wasn't going to be overpowered. It was a really um, interesting kind of balancing act that I had to find and uh, try to try to hit the right levels. Like I wanted the, the lava to be visible there as a side effect of the piece. I didn't want it to be overpowering and the main thing that you see. Uh, a lot of the times when you see salamanders painted, I feel like the, I feel like the lava and if you're going to go for like, you know, a cliche feel like this guy is fairly cliche salamander in the sense that it's lava and, you know, green in the lava. Um, in order to pull off a green that looks like the kind of green salamander that you want it to look like, you can't, well, I feel like you can't have too much of the glow of the red from the from below, otherwise it, it doesn't balance out properly. It ends up just looking too much like it's all lava. And if you think about the way light works, if it's bright enough for him to be this bright from the top, then that light is going to overshadow any of the light that's that's coming from um, the light of the lava. So I, I was working really, um, really carefully to try and balance that. And so when you, when you look at it from this angle where the light is coming from, you can't really see any of the orange. And, and so because of that, the orange light will really only hit into the shadows. But also because of that, on the shadow side, I, I put a lot more effort into making sure it was it looks good when you turn the model up, which is not something that I always do because most most of the time you don't look at a model from below. So I've actually quite, quite liked the effect that he's got going, like especially on the inside of the leg there. Um, to paint this is tricky. I mean, you're blending from green to orange and that's not a very uh, big blend when you think about going across the wheel. Um, if you go from green to yellow to orange, it's fairly close together. And it's, it's, not a, it's not a difficult thing to blend. But when you look at the wheel more closely, um, lava is more orange than yellow. So it's not so close as you think. And in fact, it's almost completely opposite. You're going to red more than orange and just putting some some orange into the very edges so it's blending from green to red i decided in this case to to actually go uh the other way around the wheel so i went from green to blue to purple to red to orange so it's a fairly big blend all the way around the, the wheel but it looks really cool it gives this depth of color to the the greens because they've got that extra tone in them and I didn't use any blues, uh, just painted straight from dark green using the Scale 75 Artist paints. Um, it was sap green straight to uh, dark violet. But when you mix those two together, you get this almost blue tone that gives you the, the, the blend that it needs to go across and it keeps it warm looking without going into the blues. I was quite pleased with that. Uh, I tried to give the, the melter a bit of a um, a heated tip look with the purple and I mean NMM there sure but it's kind of like dulled down because of the heat so maybe that would be a shiny bronze um, but instead yeah, I've got it a, a little bit more dull I didn't want because the because this is down here and quite far away away from the, the focal point. I didn't want too much attention there. I just wanted it to be a secondary thing. And so instead I've focused most of my NMM work on, as you can see, the, the dragon badge and on the spear. 
Uh, I've got some purple to green to white on the spear. I'm quite happy with the way the spear looks now. Um, I had it painted differently up until the very last day and then I ended up repainting the shadow of the spear. It's much nicer the way it is now than, than one stage back. It's, just, it's funny how you can do uh, a fairly small change like that, but I feel like it had a significant, Im significant impact on the look of the model. Um, And you've got another um, texture change in the in the cloak, uh, trying to differentiate these items. So you've got the ceramide of the armor, you've got the the shiny gold, and all of this stuff pulls the focus to the face. Um, and then you've got the the cloak being different. I didn't want to go too many different colors because there's already a lot of color in this. There's almost the whole wheel except for blue. Uh, so I, I could have gone more reds or purples and pinks in the cloak, but I decided to go with this duller green because I felt like it would suit. And a lot of the artwork of Salamanders has this um, greeny looking cloak. And I think it, I think it goes well with the scene. Uh, the back of the model, I mean, it's the back of the model, but still there's a, there's a large uh, area of, of this model that, doesn't have any really bad angles I would say which is something I've been working a lot on trying to ensure that we don't have any bad angles I would say that like even even this this one from below like this it's not even it's not bad working more towards trying to make sure that using these techniques we're not sacrificing angles because that's what miniatures are you know they're 3d things don't, I still don't love painting the back and I, I guess it's difficult to ever put as much effort into the back as, as the front because it's not the main focus point but uh, you know it's just some of the stuff that we, we look about or think about sorry uh, and then the skin the salamander skin it was tricky very tricky um, I have painted it once before and I used similar tones to that, although it was Scale 75 Artist this time, it was dark brown ochre and, and wood uh, with some pastel green in there on, on the hair areas. Uh, and basically that that's what accounts for the skin tones. Um, I had a lot of fun painting this guy, especially on the face. So, um, I think I've covered just about everything that I wanted to cover on this guy. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and if you have any questions, as always, just chuck them down in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for viewing. See you later.